is euthanasia a fundamental human right? Well, this week's challenge says that it is, and here's what they state. The right to choose is fundamental and applies to all elements of human life, which by the nature of human life includes the right to choose how you die. As an example, a terminally ill individual who is currently under significant pain may choose to die with dignity as is his right. To deny him this is to deny him his personal autonomy and is an act that is, is trespassing on his humanity. Now the challenge goes on to explain a little bit more about some of the details of what a situation might be like that would prompt a person to want to have euthanasia. But let me just make one quick clarification here before I respond. This challenge seems to be more about physician-assisted suicide than it is about euthanasia. Now, there's a, a small but significant difference between those two things. In the case of physician-assisted suicide, it is the patient who is administering the drug or the chemical themselves that ends up killing themselves, okay? In euthanasia, uh, you have someone other than the patient administering the drug or the lethal dose of a substance to kill them, okay? So again, it's a small, but I think a significant difference between those two things. I think this challenge is more about physician-assisted suicide than it is about euthanasia. Now the challenge here claims that people have a fundamental right to euthanasia. And so in my response, I wanna focus on this notion of what it means to have a fundamental right and what is a right. Now I think a right entails two kinds of things. And the first is this, a right is a just claim to something. It means that you believe you are entitled to something and therefore someone else has an obligation to provide that thing to you. So for example, if you say, I have a right to a college education, what that means is that you believe that you're entitled to someone paying for a college education, that you deserve a college education, and that someone else is obligated to give that thing to you, whether it be uh, your parents, or the state, or, or whoever, but someone has to pay for it or provide that for you. The second thing is this, all rights entail moral language. That means if you believe you have a fundamental right to something, that means you believe that you, um, there is a moral obligation for you to get that thing, and someone else is morally obligated to provide you with that thing, okay? And so therefore, it would be immoral to withhold that thing from you if you believe you have a fundamental right to it. Now, rights don't just pop into existence out of thin air, okay? They have to be grounded and they have to be granted. And by grounded, I just simply mean that a right has to have an appropriate grounding. There has to be an appropriate rationale and justification for why you believe you deserve that right. They also have to be granted. That means that someone has to be identified as the person responsible for granting you that particular right. And so this then raises a question in my mind regarding this challenge. Who is the person demanding that they have or that people have a right to euthanasia? And specifically, what is their worldview? And I wanna kinda of know that because to me, the key question is, is who is the person they believe is going to grant them this particular right? Now, let me just evaluate this question based upon uh, or according to uh, two worldviews atheism and the Christian worldview. Of course, there's other worldviews, but let me just address it regarding those two worldviews. Now, if the person who is making this challenge is an atheist and, and atheism is a worldview, then I see at least two problems. Number one is this. Rights mean that there must be a rights giver. But of course, if atheism is true or if that's the worldview of the person, then there is no God, there is no rights giver. Therefore, there is no one to give you these rights. Now, they might say, but Alan, um, okay, there's no God, but I will just say that the state is the one who gives us these rights. And therefore, we can uh, you know, vote or you know, fight for you know, certain legislation to give the right to euthanasia. Well, that's true, you can do that, but uh, there's two problems with that. Number one is this, uh, if the state can give you a right, then the state can also take that right away. And of course, if that's the nature of the right, the second thing that follows is that this is not a fundamental human right. It's not a right that is given to you by virtue of be you being human. It's just a right that's given to you by virtue of vote. And as I said, if it can be voted into law, it can be voted out of law. The state can give it to you, but the state can also take it away. Now, the second problem with the atheist, atheistic worldview regarding this particular challenge is that um, a right, as I said, entails moral claims. 
And if there is no God, there is no moral lawgiver. So who is the person then going to ensure that you have a moral obligation to receive this particular fundamental human right? Now we can also evaluate this challenge in light of a Christian worldview. Now in a Christian worldview, there is a God, so there is a rights giver, and there is a moral law giver, so there is a possibility that in the Christian worldview there, that there is a fundamental right to something. And indeed, there are fundamental rights in light of the Christian worldview. In fact, that's the way the Declaration of Independence grants or says that we as American citizens have rights. All men are created equal and are endowed by their creator, by God, certain unalienable rights name the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. So it makes sense that there would be, in a Christian worldview, the possibility of fundamental human rights. However, here's the problem. <laughs> if there is a God, and the Bible is true, and the Christian worldview is true, then you don't have a fundamental right to euthanasia because the Bible also teaches that you don't have the right to kill an innocent human being without proper justification. And that implies that you don't have the right to kill an innocent human being even when that human being is yourself. Okay? Now, if you're a Christian, and, and in other words, if it's not just that the Christian worldview is true, but that you're actually a follower of Jesus Christ, well, then you're even more limited. Because the scriptures tell us that if you're a Christian, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. And God, therefore, is your rightful authority and uh, he doesn't give you the fundamental right to kill yourself because he is the author of life and, of course, of also of death. So notice, if atheism is true, then there is no rights giver, there is no moral law giver, so there's no possibility to have a fundamental right to euthanasia. And, of course, if the Christian worldview is true, and again, I know there's other worldviews, but just regarding these two, if the, if the Christian worldview is true, then, of course, you still don't have a fundamental right to euthanasia because, of course, God would oppose the killing of innocent human beings, even when that human being is yourself.